Today we're going to have a look at the world's largest offshore oil field, that is Safanaya. The oil field is located in the Persian Gulf or the Arabian Gulf, offshore Saudi Arabia, shown by the arrow. They do say that some of the oil field actually underlies the beach just on the coastline there, but the field is predominantly offshore. I'm going to be talking about uh, some other fields later on. We did a video recently on the world's largest oil field. Now, Safanaya is the largest offshore oil field, but it's not the world's largest oil field. And we'll talk about uh, Bergen a little bit later, and you can see its location here. It's uh, to the north in Kuwait. Saudi Aramco are the operator of Safanaya, and it's uh, claimed to be the largest conventional offshore oil field and that's by proved reserve size. Here on the map you can see Safanaya and as it crosses into the neutral zone or the partition territory which is a shared area with the Kuwait, Saudi Arabia's northerly neighbour, you can see the name changes and it's called uh, the Kafji oil field but Kafji or the northern part is operated by AGOC and the Kuwaiti National Oil Company. Now, Safanaya was discovered in 1951. It's an elongate northeast-southwest anticline, and the sands are low Cretaceous. It produces the Arabian heavy crude. Most of the field is offshore. It's of the order of 50 to 65 kilometers long and up to 15 kilometers wide. Now, uh, it's interesting to note that Bergen was set on fire with the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait in 1990, there was a sudden pressure drop, which was seen at Kafji. Now, if you look at the map there, it's over 100 kilometers away. Possibly it was seen at Safanaya, but that's not confirmed. So we know that there's an absolute huge connected aquifer in this region, and that the aquifer has indeed supported uh, oil production and kept the oil above bubble point throughout the history of the field. Now, it is an undersaturated oil and uh, came on production in 1957. It did produce dry up until the 1980s, but by the late 80s started to see a water encroachment and some water fingering, so basically an edge drive kind of system. Now with that water started a number of issues and one of the major ones was sand production, which was due to the fact that these uh, sands are, are quite poorly consolidated. But that was mitigated with uh, using gravel packs. Now, the processing is done at four offshore gas oil separation plants and others onshore as well. If we look at this region, we're doing Safanaya today. We've done a video on uh, Gawa. We've also done one on the Northfield, which is the largest gas field in the world. We've also done a number of other ones, and we'll probably follow up the number of rigs that are being bought up by companies in the Middle East is absolutely enormous, mainly uh, jackups and land rigs. This was done quite some time ago, about a year ago now, I think, when uh, Adno had got up to uh, 99. It's well over 100 now. So Saudi Arabia oil and gas reserves, good one to watch because it's a real enigma and very, very difficult to understand what's going on, but has huge implications for uh, Western economies who are relying on uh, Saudi oil for security of supply. In February 2023, we put together a look at some events that were significant in the region. Now, here's a look at one of the offshore complexes, and you can see there are a huge number of platforms associated with Safanaya, and we'll see a little bit more of that in a minute. Now, on the seismic, you can see it's just a very, very large structure. Now, the principal reservoir is between the Ahmadi uh, limestone and the Madud uh, limestone. So this is the interval here, and it's quite easily mapped out. Now, 37 billion barrels of oil. We'll have a look at that in a minute, but in terms of stratigraphy, here's where we are between the Madud and essentially reservoirs get up into the Ramela as well. But Wara sandstone is the, the primary interval. So it's sort of Albion, Senamanian sort of age, mid-Cretaceous uh, sandstones. It differs to fields like Gawa, which a lot of fields in Saudi Arabia are actually down here in, in the Jurassic Arab formation. These are the carbonates down here. And then, of course, we have the deeper underlying uh, Permian Kuf formation in other parts. But if we look at some of the details on Safanaya and indeed on Kafji, the northern extension into the partition zone, you can see it's not very deep here. Oil water contacts around about 5,500 feet. 
We've got uh, reservoir thicknesses on average of uh, around about 136 feet. Oil viscosity, well, it is a heavy oil, and we'll come back on that, it's sort of 27 to 28 API, and its viscosity is about uh, four and a half to six and a half centipoise. Porosity of the rock, very, very good quality, around about 25, 26%. Permeability, 5.7 to 6.3 Darcy's, it's really excellent quality. And these are world-class productivity indices uh, of uh, 136, 146. So it is better in the north, and we'll see the reason for that in a minute. So initially when the field was found, this 2728 API was seen as a disappointment, and that's because there was a glut of fuel oil on the market. Now, we know that that changed over time. It's now a very prolific producer, as we will see. In the north, we've got very thick sandstones interbedded with uh, some siltstone shale, thin limestones, and occasional coals and ironstones. In the south, uh, more distributary channels, mouth bars, crevice plays with bay and pro delta shales. Generally, better quality sandstones in the north or northeast of the field. We want to look at reserves, and it was really during the Saudi Aramco sell-off back in uh, 2018 that we actually had a competent persons report, and a number there put reserves at Safanaya at uh, 34 billion barrels of oil equivalent, and that's as at uh, 31st of December 2018. To give that some context, if you put the entirety of all the fields in the uh, UKCS, uh, the United Kingdom continental shelf, They've only produced some 26 billion barrels of oil to date. Back in uh, 2018, they had a capacity to produce 1.3 million barrels of oil. But uh, it's interesting to have a look at the history. And here you can see in this table, back in 1957, initially, it's eight years after discovery, 18 wells were drilled and got up to around about 50,000 barrels a day. And at various times through history, you can see through the 70s, the reserves started high and kind of became lower and lower. And, and the field was producing in the order of a million barrels, plus or minus a day. Reserves were falling, but by 1993, we know that there was uh, 624 wells in the field. Then by 2010, the reports were of 37 billion barrels. And by 2018, as we saw in the CPR, 34 billion barrels. So why are the reserves going kind of all over the place and, and in particular going up? Well, an example would come from, say, uh, looking at just the activity in 2009, 27 new platforms were added. An additional 95 wells were brought on production. And kind of de-bottlenecking, there was installed a new 42-inch crude oil trunk line. Also, major upgrades to the power supplies. Now, with the water breakthrough, the use of electrical submersible pumps became widespread, and these helped to maintain production now, some of the changes in reserves can be understood a little clearer if we look at the production history of Safanaya. This is from Oil Drum, and you can see that production at this time was actually falling quite abruptly here to the early 90s. And although production did pick up around about this time, they assessed that there was going to be a steady decline and an ultimate recoverable for the field of the order of 15 billion barrels. However, this decline did not happen. And as you can see that by 2018, there is a capacity for 1.3 million barrels. So the decline at times did look very, very severe, but that was arrested and uh, with uh, new wells, new infill drilling and uh, a variety of reasons, the field did manage to produce for much longer. Now, in terms of uh, source rocks, there's really been a lot of deposition and burial up to around about the end of the Cretaceous, where many of the rocks in this region here, so this is the uh, the Jurassic section and deeper, get into the oil window. And really throughout much of the tertiary, it's been a stable shelf. There hasn't been a huge amount of either the burial or uplift for that matter. It's been relatively static. So a lot of the generation probably was latest Cretaceous into the uh, the early tertiary and uh, it's been preserved for a long time in these huge structures uh, because this has been quite a tectonically uh, quiescent part of the world. So what are the next steps for Safanaya? 
Well, in 2023, there is going to be major investment and expansion and further development. So there have been a series of phased developments here. We are currently awaiting a date for submission of multi-billion dollar tendering for the next phase of Sapphire upgrades. There's going to be 10 epic contracts expected to be awarded within the year. These will be huge. And the idea is that uh, further increases to the amount of production that we can get from Safanaya. Now, the one thing we don't know is how much of these projects to actually increase rate, how much of it is actually adding incremental reserves or is it just acceleration? Now, it is very, very important to kind of understand if incremental reserves are being added, then yes, the field is kind of growing in size and is, is getting bigger. But if it's just acceleration, then potentially the field's production could at some point in the future really decline very, very rapidly. So again, understand what's going on. Watch the video on the reserves history of Saudi Arabia. So there's our entry in Safanaya, and we can put this story together based on the material you're looking at there. The takeaways from this, well, Safanaya, its ultimate recoverable is absolutely huge. We don't have a handle on that number. I mean, we know that there's of the order of 34 billion barrels left in the 2020 sort of time frame. But how much has been produced since 1957? It is a huge field. Reserves are uh, enigmatic and it doesn't help long-term planning or countries thinking about the security of supply that they're going to have. Lots of learnings are not being shared. But Safanaya, I hope you found it interesting. We'll be doing other fields in and around this region in future. For now, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. You'll get informed of new videos that we'll be bringing out. And get in touch. There's the email address and the website. Thanks again. Bye for now.